Great. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for, for joining us as we discuss the return to learn. For more students, I want to welcome and thank uh, Mayor Bronin for joining us and for his continued partnership and support, as well as uh, his entire team, specifically our Health and Human Services Director, Ms. Liani Arroyo, whose thought partnership and expertise has been key throughout this entire year. And I also want to thank uh, Principal Tony Davila of Dwight Belize uh, Dual Language Academy, who um, is here to actually share his perspective from, from a principal's perspective and uh, the teacher perspective as to what has happened in the last couple of weeks as we get ready to welcome 2,600 additional students. Um, as, as you might uh, have heard, we did survey our families and um, we had 9,600 students that were still learning completely remotely, 4,800, so about half of those families did respond to our survey and 2,600 of uh, those students have confirmed that they will be returning on Monday. And um, we started transitioning students back in at the beginning of March, beginning with our K through nine students who were hybrid. They returned to in-person every single day, followed the next week um, in, on March 8th by our 10th to 12th graders who transitioned from hybrid to uh, every single day, and now here we are welcoming, uh, opportun giving opportunity for remote learners to come and join us every single day as well. Um, you know, I know that Director Arroyo is here to speak to uh, some of the questions that are out there with regard to the distancing. Um, we've, we continue to implement our mitigations, which have been quite successful since the beginning of the school year. Uh, in partnership with uh, Trinity Health and St. Francis, we've been able to offer a vaccination uh, program for, uh, for our staff. Over 2,100 of our staff have been vaccinated. Actually, at this moment, they're receiving their, um, their second dose of the vaccination. And so we continue to create um, an environment that is safe for students and for our staff. We know that in-person learning is the best learning. And we know that many of our students are not meeting success um, with remote learning as evidenced, for example, by our high chronic absenteeism rates, right, and our, and our lower engagement rates. And so to the extent possible, we're gonna continue. We're gonna continue to offer the opportunity for students to uh, come and join us. And so I'm gonna ask uh, Mayor Bronin to also say a few words. Thank you so much, Superintendent. Uh, thanks, uh, Principal Davila, and to the entire team here at uh, Belize uh, who have been working in uh, creative ways uh, with incredible commitment to our kids throughout this year, uh, trying to do everything possible to uh, make this incredibly difficult year a little bit easier for our kids and to have the opportunity now to welcome every child uh, who is ready to be back in the classroom in person, back into the classroom, is a tremendous step forward. Uh, I want to give a, a, a really big uh, shout out and thanks to the superintendent and to the entire team of educators and administrators and staff at the Hartford Public Schools uh, because they have kept in-person learning to some degree open throughout this year uh, in, in a way that many districts in our state and around the country were not able to do, to maintain that five days a week of learning for those who opted in for the first uh, part of the year, then shifting for hybrid, and now offering the opportunity for every child to be back in the classroom. Uh, as the superintendent said, there is no substitute for being in that classroom with your teacher, with your peers, learning face-to-face, -face, having not just the academic curriculum, but the social and emotional engagement that comes with being physically in a classroom. So uh, I, I want to say thank you to every educator and every member of the Harvard Public Schools team who is part uh, of this transition back return to learn. Uh, as the superintendent said, uh, our Health Director Liani Royo has been uh, central to this effort to make sure that we are being as responsible and careful as possible throughout the year and also doing everything possible to give our kids the best learning opportunities we can. Uh, as we come back into the classroom, it's worth remembering that during this year in which classrooms have been open uh, either five days a week or a few days a week throughout this entire year, 
the hard work and the care for protocols that have been put in place have ensured that our classrooms have not become centers of significant transmission. That's really important to remember as we transfer back into uh, fully in-person learning, that uh, throughout this year, even when the numbers were significantly higher than they are today, uh, our classrooms were not centers of mass transmission because wearing masks matters, washing hands matters, maintaining uh, you know, your, your distance from crowds and avoiding physical contact, all of that matters. When you're in an environment like a school where the protocols are clear, where everyone is respecting one another and wearing their masks, uh, we have ample data at this point that we can protect against the spread of the virus uh, in our school community. And, and as Superintendent said, we now uh, thank goodness, uh, thanks to the tremendous work of many scientists and thanks to the uh, partnership of, uh, of our hospitals uh, and many others, uh, we now can say that our, our team at Hartford Public Schools has had the opportunity to be vaccinated as well. So again, a big thank you to the entire team. Uh, my my uh, huge thanks to the superintendent for your leadership uh, on uh, throughout this difficult year. And uh, I couldn't have uh, a better uh, uh, you know, general uh, commanding our, our team than Leonio Arroyo, who has been uh, uh, working tirelessly to make sure that we are keeping our community safe and helping especially uh, to bring our kids back safely and responsibly. And again, a thank you as well, a huge thank you to our teachers, our paraprofessionals, our administrators, every educator and every member of the Hartford Public Schools team for doing uh, all that you've done this year and for now preparing to welcome uh, every child who's ready to come back in person into the classroom. Thank you. So I'll ask uh, Director Arroyo to uh, share um, her thinking and her um, experience with regard to uh, distancing. I know that that's a question that we continue to get and although we will maintain the six feet of distancing in the cafeteria. I know that there are other questions that we continue to get. In addition to uh, Director Arroyo, the question as to the vaccination and the time that we have to allow before uh, staff return or students return to the classroom. So, uh, you know, I, I also want to give my thanks to the superintendent and her team. It has been a pleasure working with them. They have let science lead the way throughout the pandemic. They have worked tirelessly to ensure that students and staff have been safe. And I have full confidence in the plan that they put together to bring students back. I have full confidence that safety will be uh, maintained and that uh, the work that has been done throughout the past year will continue. When we first uh, announced that the schools would be going hybrid, one of the things I mentioned is that education is a social influencer, social determinant of health. And I think we've seen that throughout this pandemic. And that is why it is critical that our students, as many students as possible, get back into these buildings and get ready and get back to learning um, with their colleagues, uh, and with their students, uh, with their friends, to be able to really have that full experience of being in school, not just the education, but that social emotional piece as well that is critical for our children. Um, as has been mentioned, uh, they are committed and are going to be able to maintain the recommendations of the CDC with the three feet in the classroom and the six feet in other areas. Um, but I also think it's important to understand that that is one piece of a larger puzzle as it relates to coming back into a school building. There's uh, uh, work around air quality, there's work around masking, there's work around hand hygiene, and all of those things have been happening throughout the year. So again, I have the utmost confidence that those things will continue and the health department will remain in partnership with the school district to ensure that if there are any questions or changes or if the situation changes that we again let science lead uh, the way to ensure that our families and our staff are safe. As it relates to um, vaccinations as you've heard uh, we have many a uh, large number of the teachers and staff have chosen to be vaccinated. What we also know is that more research has shown that one vaccination does confer a large, a large amount of immunity and so, again, I think it is the right time and it is safe to bring both staff and our students back into a building and we must maintain those mitigation policies that we've had. Our numbers are, are lower than where we were, um, I think, when we started school, um, uh, when we went hybrid. And so we're in a good place to do this and in a good place to maintain it for the rest of the year. Thank you.
And um, I, I'd like to ask Mr. Uh, Principal Davila to just speak to us um, about his experience and his team's experience. So just to give you a little context, uh, Dwight Belize dual language um, will be the school with the highest number of students that are returning in person. I believe he, uh, Principal Davila, over 70% of your students will be returning. And um, it is a school that services more than 40% of English learners. And clearly, it has been a collaborative effort. And so for Principal Davila to just speak to some of his learnings and his efforts here with his team. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so to talk briefly, um, you know, this, this has been a really challenging couple of weeks, uh, for sure, to say the least. Um, and so, you know, in kind of reflecting on what Superintendent uh, Torres Rodriguez was talking about, we didn't know that um, we were the, one of the largest schools to have kids returning and 100, over 150 students coming back on Monday. Um, and I'm going to tell you, uh, I can assure you that it wasn't a target that we were aiming for. You know, um, the district has a challenge. It's March Madness attendance challenge. And so we have to lower our chronic absenteeism and raise our attendance. That's a marker that we're intentionally working towards. This is something that, to be honest with you, um, it's been a little overwhelming because the figures that we estimated were quite conservative. We really expected to have about maybe 50, excuse me, 50 students come back. Um, and so we reached out to our teachers um, because we wanted to make sure that every single student was um, contacted and we talked to every single parent. And so as we talked to our teachers about those conversations, we let them know that some of our parents weren't going to be comfortable with this transition. Uh, we let them know that they need to um, approach the parents with a little, uh, a little sensitivity. Um, and, you know, in speaking with our teachers, um, they're really excited about the kids coming back. Um, it's really difficult to engage and connect with your students and teach them online. Um, it really is an activity that is best done face-to-face, -face, in person. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we weren't imposing our, you know, our opinions on them, but letting the parents kind of decide what was best for them and their families. Um, and so um, the teachers have been instrumental throughout the entire process. Um, there's been so many details as we sit with the district um, and they give us what the CDC guidelines are. Um, you know, filling a building with uh, 400 students and complying with every guideline, making sure that everybody is safe is immensely challenging. But luckily we have teachers that think innovatively. Um, they're part of our planning process. The custodians are part of our planning process. So we've tapped everybody on the shoulder, and they've all been part of this process. You know, and finally, you know, uh, I think our families you know, um, have been instrumental in this as well. You know, I, we have a pretty par active SGC and parents that are always giving us their opinion. We're open to them. But uh, a lot of what we've heard mostly is um, our, their kids aren't doing well at home in terms of the learning. Some of them, uh, as any parents in the room, know that when you have kids at home for a certain length of time, you want them in school. Um, and then. Uh, also, parents need to get back to work. They need to start their lives again. So it's been, I think uh, a lot of them are uh, nervous. I, I think I, I'd be lying to anybody if I didn't tell you that both our teachers and our, our, our parents are nervous about what could potentially happen in school. Um, and so it's been a difficult decision for everybody. But I think they're making what they think is the best decision for their kids. And I think so are we. Um, and I'm going to, yeah, at the end of the day, we love our kids. And I cannot wait to see them on Monday. Well, what we do know is that all of the mitigation policies and strategies that we have in place work against the variants. And so it is, becomes even more critically important to ensure that everyone's wearing their mask at all times, at the times that they should be. It becomes more important to keep windows open, have the air filters going. So all of those things become important. So I think we will continue to look at the data, see what happens, but at this point in time, the mitigation strategies that we have in place are the right ones, even against the variants. I have a question, actually, for the principal. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And Superintendent, you can jump into this, too, if you want. You kind of touched on this a little bit. Parents, naturally, are no, you know, people are nervous about this time. Yeah. You know, what are those conversations that maybe parents are having with their kids and within the family unit, kind of leading into Monday? Any words of advice? 
Yeah, so one of the, that's a good, great question. Um, one of the things we've been talking to our teachers about is to, um, in, within their Google Classrooms, because all of our students have a Google Classroom account, and so to put enough information on there for them to share with their parents, but also sending out phone blasts to parents about talking to students about wearing their masks, about social distancing, sanitation, um, all of that. We also, um, at our school, we've gotten all their kids their own material so they don't have to share. So it's making sure that they're talking to kids about not sharing materials, not sharing food. I think everything that's been kind of um, already talked about, you know, through the health department, through the CDC, just kind of having parents have those conversations with their kids. Even kind of more personally, not beyond even just the guidelines, yeah. but that it's going to be okay, you know. Yeah. Can you touch on that a little bit, kind of the emotional Yeah, of so that, and that has come up. Um, I think um, a small population of our parents have really had their children be nervous about coming into school. So our social work department has been awesome about helping parents have those conversations with our students um, in terms of just helping them to know that we're doing everything in our power to keep them safe and that, you know, their chances of being infected in, a, in this environment is not very high. Sure. It's uh, Anthony Davila. Uh, D A V I L A is uh, my last name. Say your last name one more time. Davila. But I'm sorry, I'm gonna, as far as what, what do you, it's a, there's a trend kind of going up hearing from parents, teachers, and kids. I mean, just feeling secure in this environment as more vaccines come out and, and it's getting yeah. warmer. I mean, Anecdotally, what are you hearing? So, yeah. So I, so I think, you know, for the people that follow um, the, the, the stats, I know that it's going up. It is a concern. You know, I think you need to track it more than just, because that's the thing. We get it, like, some of us watch it every day, every week. So I think we also need to watch it over time, um, because I think the long-term um, trends say something also. But for our parents, really, they're just kind of still listening. They're not following the stats. They're following, you know, the recommendations from the CDC, the doctors that speak online. We've had, um, I know that in our town halls, we've had medical professionals speak to it. Uh, I think it's been really helpful for the teachers because the town halls have been for us, but they've also been for our community members and our families. So I think just hearing their recommendations really kind of uh, put us at ease that we're putting the right things in place. No, but hearing from parents, you, 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 yeah. you, do you feel they're getting more at ease? Because I mean, you got you got a high number coming back, so I mean, what are you hearing? Well, but that's, so, so that's the thing. That, that to me tells me, I ex like I said, I didn't expect for parents to be so enthusiastic to be sending their kids to school. I'm going to be honest with you, right? So them sending 150 of their kids, 100 plus, 150 plus, to us, that to me speaks volumes more than any other, you know, one-to-one -one conversation that I could have. So, Anthony, on Monday when that bell rang, what are you most looking forward to? Oh, for me? Yeah. Oh, my God. Just greeting my kids, you know, just being able to, because they're going to be excited. Uh, I mean, even when I, um, when I pop into an online classroom to do an observation and they see my face, it's, hi, Mr. Davila. Like, they, they, that's, you know, all the time. So I know that when they come here on person, I think the biggest challenge is going to be to stop them from hugging me. <laughs> Yeah, so I will um, reiterate what we've been reiterating since early February. One is um, the recommendation, first and foremost, from the CDC, from our local health uh, officials and state officials with regard to not having to wait. We don't need to wait for the second vaccination before having students come back um, because it's not just about the vaccination, right? We heard Director Arroyo speak to it's the layering of one mitigation on top of another that really makes it a comprehensive approach to keeping everyone safe. And the other piece with regard to um, not being ready, um, and, and Principal Davila can, can speak to this, but we have provided uh, support throughout the last couple of weeks to ensure that everyone is ready. And it has been a team approach from, from every school up until the district level, making sure that our custodians you know, have brought in the additional desks that are necessary. Capital Prep, for example, just the other day received an additional 10 
uh, tables for their cafeteria. And so um, providing the supports, which we have done and will continue to do, we modified schedules to have half day schedules this week for um, allowing staff additional time to prepare. Today is a half day, which is you know, probably why you see our staff um, in a you know, more relaxed uh, attire because right, students are, are learning remotely to facilitate um, and allow opportunity for preparing. And all of our school leaders have uh, confirmed that coverage um, is all set, ready to go for Monday. Our, our, our meals, our staff cafeteria, um, our cafeteria staff uh, is ready to go. We've hired additional staff actually as well. Our, our bus routes have been, have been ready to go. Um, we're ready. We're ready for our students and we can't wait to, to have them back. No, I just wanted to add one, just one quick thing to that, which is, look, I, I, as a superintendent, as, and as Liani said, we've been guided by the science, by the CDC, by state health officials and by our local officials from the beginning. And this decision also is guided by that science and by that guidance from CDC, state health officials, and local officials. And it's also really important uh, to, to remember that after a year of such incredible disruption to education, for thousands of kids here in Hartford and millions around the country, every month matters, every week matters, every day matters as we work to help our kids catch up, recover, and heal from this difficult year. Absolutely. I, 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 yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, and I'll just, I'll give you some, some pieces to, to also uh, think about. You know, we've had close to 700 requests this year uh, to our welcome center relative to families experiencing homelessness. Highest it has ever been. Requests for clothing, uh, including undergarments, shoes, requests that we had not seen before. And these are for students that are learning remotely and staying remotely. Uh, requests for additional supports um, for our families. Uh, we have seen an increase in the amount of supports uh, to students around mental, mental health. Um, and, and, and their safety. And so, um, you know, the mayor said that it's a, it's a year for the students that are remaining at home. By the time we come back to next year, it'll be 18 months before they've been with us in school. And so that's working. I know that's working for some students because some students have a system of support established at home and, and they're gonna, you know, they're okay. Others, many, do not have that support system in place. And so we have also a responsibility while safely doing so to welcome students back in. My last question is just like a quick breakdown. I don't know if you have all the numbers off the top of your head. I know that you said that 2,600 are coming back. Do you have a percentage or a number of, you know, this many Harvard Public School students are going to be in person versus those continuing to be remote? Yes, so I, uh, so 27% of the ones that are fully remote are, are returning. So 2,600 additional students are returning for a total of 10,300 students that will now be in person as of Monday. Uh, and so still 7,000 students are remaining uh, remotely. One more time, Michael. Yes, so we have 10,328 to be exact that are going to be here on Monday with us and still 7,000 of our students are, are learning remotely. It is a little over 50 now that are going to be in person. And, you know, that distribution actually is about 500 students at the high school level. The majority, uh, 20, you know, about 2,100 are pre-K, 3 through 8th grade. And so, you know, you still see that we, we have a lot of ground still to cover, um, you know, given that, you know, when we look at our chronic absenteeism, it is, it is a challenge across all grades, but it is a, a bigger challenge at the high school level. So still a lot of a lot of work that we have to do. If someone decides a family member in a month saying, hey, actually I want my kids to go back, I see that this is working and it's fine, can, can parents pivot? I appreciate your question. Um, I think that we are seeing that it's working. And so what we are asking parents that have not confirmed I appreciate your question and what we are asking parents that have not confirmed we're asking parents that if they're still interested in bringing students back for Monday, they have to confirm. Please confirm today, right? Because we have to arrange for the spacing, transportation. And if they will not uh, confirm by today, call the school next week so that we can make those arrangements. And so we'll take those on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis as well. I was going to show up. 
Yeah, don't just show up. Um, <laughs> only because, right, we, we have arranged everything based on guidelines, right? Safety guidelines. And so we, we are maintaining the integrity of those guidelines. You guys were all involved over all these months. You had all, a lot of pressure to reopen and a lot of pressure to stay closed. What are the things that mainly turn the tide and say, time to open? Yeah, so one is the external health conditions, right? When we, when we look at um, in conversation and consultation with our partners, we know that um, the health metrics are favorable to allowing more students to, to, to come back in. Add to that the fact that vaccinations are here, and we've tried to solve for that and offer an opportunity for each staff member to have access to that. Um, the mitigations that we've, we've put into place as well, and then this other reality for us that we continue to hear from families that it is not working. It is not working for their child, it is not working for their family, and um, we put all of those things together and look at the opportunities that we have in front of us and our commitment, our commitment to making sure that our students that are mostly affected, which happen to be our most marginalized students that live in our highest need areas, have access to high quality teaching and learning, and that is best happening in our schools. How high is your confidence? This is the time to. I am fully confident, not only my, in, my in, 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 in our decision, but fully confident in our staff, in our leaders, across our entire school, and in each and every one of our classrooms that um, we're going to make it work for our students. Thank you. Thank you. I got a question on top of for you. Uh, when it comes to the insurance offer, you guys have offered rejected. Do you have any? Oh, questions? that was a uh, very different topic, but happy to, uh, happy to address it. Um, Look, the, the Hartford's uh, board of directors issued uh, a very strong statement uh, a few days ago that made clear that they did not view uh, Chubb's offer to be in the best interests of shareholders. Uh, I think that was uh, a, a very, very strong statement from the board of directors. It read to me like a pretty unequivocal statement from the board of directors. Uh, as a public official in the city of Hartford, uh, I also you know, want to say that the Hartford is a tremendous partner. They have been uh, a part of this community for hundreds of years. Uh, as uh, a local official here, and, uh, and I think the same would likely be true of uh, other officials throughout the state and regulators, you know, if anything were to, uh, if any kind of discussions were to continue uh, beyond that very strong statement from the board of directors of the Hartford, uh, I would have very serious concerns about whether uh, this acquisition is in the best interests uh, of the public, whether it's in the best interest of the state of Connecticut, of the people of the state of Connecticut, uh, whether it's in the best interests of consumers. Uh, so I think there would be a lot of questions about whether this transaction would be in the public interest. Uh, but again, uh, you know, it was, it was, from my perspective, uh, the statement that was issued by the Hartford's Board of Directors uh, was very strong and clear in uh, expressing their view that this transaction is not in the best interest of shareholders. And again, uh, I, uh, and I think many others, would have very significant questions about whether that transaction would be in the public interest.